What's up, everybody? This is Coach Sharf. Welcome back to my Algebra 2 notes and examples of videos. Today, we're going to be looking at the properties of logarithms, notes we uh, did in class this week, along with the examples, or, you know, this is just notes and examples for later on down the line. If you're not watching this, you know, as I'm recording it here in, in 2021. Um, so we're going to go through our notes that we've done this week. Uh, it's 325 real time. I'm gonna try to get done by four o'clock. So the video is not too, too long. So 35 minutes, probably about 34 once I get done talking and get started. Uh, we'll see, see if that actually comes to pass because we got a lot of notes to get through and then some examples uh, on your homework assignment worksheet as well. well. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna pull up active. So we got our other logarithmic properties. You know, if you watch the previous video, we had to change a base formula in there, which although it's technically not a property, you know, I, I said that we're going to count it as one because that's that's the important one we're trying to evaluate some of these logarithms. So we got the product property, quotient property, and power property. You know, we're going to talk about each of these individually. Pause this if you need to for, you know, 30 seconds or however long it's going to take you to write it and get this down and then we're going to move on to the next slide so i'll give you about five more seconds real time again y'all can pause the video if you need to and then i'm going to move on all right logarithm property number two the product property the product property so i've got log base b of m times n equals log base b of m plus log base b of n so there's a few things to remember, not only with this, but with all the properties as we go forward. These relationships are, I don't know if reciprocal is the right word, but if you start with what's over here on the left, we're going to do what we call expand, which we'll talk about in a second to get what's on the right. If you're starting with what's on the right, we're going to do what we call condense and bring it back together into a single logarithm. A couple of other things to note, I did not have this in class, maybe I right here, maybe I should have to avoid confusion. When we had this log B right here, it does not mean it has to be log base four or log base seven. This represents any logarithm. So any logarithm with a base, those being examples, it could just be log without a base. It could also be the natural log, ln. So what, this just is in the place for whatever logarithm you have. And here where I have M, times n, you know, again, with the product property in particular, that uh, doesn't mean we're always just going to have two terms. So two variables, a number and a variable, a large number I've broken down into prime factors, which we'll kind of see in a second. I could have three or more. So I could have, you know, 12 A, B, C. All right, I have you know, this number, which you can break down. I'm doing it for effect on the next slide. You'll see what I mean in a second, but I could just leave this 12 still, and then A, B, C. So I've got four things that would have to break up. So really this would be log base four 12 plus log base four of A plus log base four of B plus log base four of C. So you can have different logarithms and it doesn't just have to be two terms. You could have more than that. All right, again, y'all pause it if you need to finish up, go into the next slide. So expand. So we got expand, condense, and evaluate. Getting ahead of myself, sorry. Expand and condense are what we're gonna focus on particularly with your homework, but you might be asked to evaluate some of these as well, okay? whether after you expand or you might be given an expanded logarithm which you have to evaluate. So we're going to start up here. Log base 2 of 24. Again, you're not really going to be asked to expand something like this, okay? It'd probably be more like 6x. Um, the reason why is kind of highlighted by what I did over here. If I'm asked to expand 24 into two things that I can multiply, well, what can I, two or more things, what can I multiply? I can do four times six, I can do three times eight, I could do two times 12, I could even do two, the full factorization, two times two times two times three. 
So there's a lot of options there. A lot of options there. So I'm just going to use the two I have as examples. So 24 breaks down to four times six and three times eight. So then I split them, put a plus sign in the middle. So each number, four and six, three and eight, gets its own log with the same base. So log base two of four plus log base two of six. Down here, log base two of three plus log base two of eight. As y'all, if y'all looked at, you know, down here, looked ahead, y'all could tell it to evaluate. And I'll get to it in a minute. This logarithmic expression and this logarithmic expression have the same value. Log base two of 24 also has the same value, which again, I'll show in a second. But if we're just talking about expanding, this is what we would do, okay? For condensing, we're gonna take two or more logs. I just have two here. They have to have the same base in order to combine them. Log base five of seven plus log base five of four. Basically, you know, starting here, and going this way, like I said. So we're not doing seven, when we combine this, we're not actually doing seven plus four, we're doing seven times four. And when I do seven times four, again, I don't wanna just leave it as that, I wanna actually multiply and get 28. So when I condense log base five of seven plus log base five of four, I get log base five of 28. Evaluate. So going to evaluate these, okay? Going to evaluate these. So again, trying to prove that this expression, this expression and my original logarithm all have the same value. So to do log base two of four, you know, if we remember the original idea of the logarithm, let's not do green, that might not show up as well. No, let's do black. If we remember the original idea of the logarithm, two to this power equals four, two to the X power equals four. So two to what power equals four? Two, two squared is four. Log base two of six, this is where we got to apply the change of base formula. So log base two of six becomes log of six. Over log of two, log of six over log of two. Again, we can punch this in the calculator, go back to the last video. If you need a reminder on how to do that, we would get 2.585 add them up, you get 4.585. Again, there is a way to punch this whole thing in the calculator without calculating these separately, but it involves a lot of parentheses and a lot of division signs. I'll try to show the example with the um, quotient uh, property on the, you know, in a couple slides, but it's probably just easier to evaluate each of these individually now. All right, log base two of three, again, split it up with the change of base formula or convert it with the change of base formula, log of three over log of two, I get 1.585. Log base two of eight, let me write it up here so I'm not trying to smush it down here. Again, we're asking two to what power equals eight? Two to what power equals eight, which is of course three, two cubed is eight. Again, if you can't, you know, I highlighted these two because you should be able to do them in your head. I didn't show, I showed it I think in most of the classes, you know, if you try to do the same thing here, with this, all right, to the side, two to the X power equals six. Again, this is not two times three equals six. Two times itself, how many times equals six? It doesn't do it evenly. That's why we gotta do change of base. This does do it evenly, but if you can't do this in your head, you can still do log of eight divided by log of two with the change of base formula and get your three. And you add 1.585 plus three, get 4.585. So I got, the same answer. So again, tying it back to what we originally had, if we evaluate this logarithm before I expanded it, using the change of base formula, log of 24 over log of two, you guessed it, I get 4.585. So again, this log base two of 24, this expression, this expression, all have the same value. I'm just changing how it looks. I'll have the same value, just changing how it looks. Let me, uh, again, give you all a brief warning and pause it if you need to get anything else. I'm sorry. Pause if you need to get anything else because I'm about to move on. All right. Logarithm property number three, quotient property. Log base B of M divided by N equals log base B of M minus log base B of N. 
So, you know, highlighted most of the most of the main stuff with the product property. One thing I want y'all to keep in mind, which I'll I'll touch on a little later. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have log base B of M divided by N divided by P. I'm not going to have a fraction within a fraction and have to deal with that. Okay. So I'm not going to have that. However, you could have log base B of M N over P or log base B of M over NP. So you could see something like this. Keep it in mind for later. We're just going to work on the basics right now, but keep this in mind for later. Because that's where we're going to have to use multiple properties at the same time. You can do multiple properties at the same time. Again, we're focusing on the basics right now, but keep things like these bottom two in mind for later. Oh, again, let me apologize for skipping ahead. Logarithm property number three, quotient property. Pause it there if you need to. And we're moving on. All right, expand. Log base four of 11 fifths. So numerator goes first, denominator goes second, put the subtraction sign in the middle. Did not erase these, but the highest point I was gonna say anyway, again, when we're condensing, they gotta have the same base, seven and seven. Log base seven to six minus log base seven or 19 equals log base seven, six over 19. So, you know, on the previous slide, when we did seven times four, again, we didn't leave it as seven times four, we did 28. Here, you don't have to divide this and get a number, a decimal. But if you have a fraction, you can simplify. Like if I had six over 18 instead, you need to simplify it to one third. If this was flipped and I wound up having 18 over six, you would straight up divide it and get three. So you still need to simplify this fraction. I've said that multiple times this year. Anytime we see fractions in math, if we think a fraction is part of a final answer, you always got to look to simplify. Always got to look to simplify. All right, now evaluate log base four of 11 minus log base four of five. So what I would do, kind of like I said on the last slide, I would do them separate. Log base of 11 or log of 11 divided by log of four using the change of base formula. Again, go back and look at the last video if you don't remember how. Gives you 1.730. Over here, log of five divided by log of four equals 1.161. Subtract them and I get 0 0.569. So this is why I would probably do this. If I could put this whole thing in my calculator, okay? But I'm gonna show y'all what that would look like. Again, if I was doing the scientific calculator, okay? Scientific calculator. If I was trying to evaluate this, it would be parentheses, log, parentheses, 11, close parentheses, divided by, log parentheses four, close parentheses, close parentheses, minus parentheses, log parentheses five, close parentheses, divided by log parentheses four, close parentheses, close parentheses. You've got six sets of parentheses, four logs, two division signs, a subtraction sign, and four numbers. That's a lot to mess up. It's a lot to mess up. Okay, so doing it separately is probably better. Your phone calculator would be even worse. Okay, your phone calculator would be even worse. It would be, I'm gonna try to think how to do this. It would be parentheses. Eleven log ten, which would automatically pop out. I do this. 1.041 divided by four log 10, which would spit out 0 0.602. Close parentheses. And then when you close the parentheses, that would give you the 
seven three zero. Then you would hit minus, open parentheses again. Let me actually move it. Well, I don't know if I can move it one more. One. I'm gonna have to try to. You have to do open parentheses again, five log 10, which would give you automatically pop out 0.698, really 0.699. Automatically pops that out divided by four log 10, which would give you, still give you that point. 602, close parentheses, it pops out 1.161. Then you hit equals. And when you're hitting equals, it's actually subtracting that and giving you the 0 0.569. Point being, it's very convoluted either way. So probably you know, when you're, if you were asked to evaluate when you get it like this, or even on the, the previous slide, probably best to just do them separately and then subtract. Um, again, if you want to compare, I will make this note before I go on. If you do want to compare to your original log, again, if we converted this with change of base, it'd be log of 11 fifths over log of four, which you can, again, put in your, I'm just going to do the scientific calculator. I'm not going to do the iPhone calculator, but this would be log parentheses 11 divided by five, close parentheses divided by log parentheses four, which would still give you that 0 0.569. All right, and I've got 19 minutes and I definitely don't think I'm gonna get done by four o'clock. Oh, again, pause if you need it. Guess I'll come back down here too if you, if you were curious on that again, you really don't have to. I was just trying to illustrate the point that you probably don't wanna try to punch these, the whole thing in your calculator. All right, moving on, power property. So again, I made the note here, whether it's log, a B, natural log, whatever. When you've got this exponent, when it's up here, you move it out in front. If it starts out, that, that would be expanding. If it starts out in front, you move it back up top, which would be condensing. Again, there's a couple tricks with this. Again, you might see us on the homework a little later. So if you have something in parentheses and outside, you still move it out. But then with this MP, you would still have to do the product property, okay, which we'll get to later. If you had LN m to the n power p. Here, I would go ahead and do the product property first. And then move this out in front and get n l n m plus l n p. And even when you're going the other way, um, Depends on when you're doing it the other way as well, because you might start with one that looks like this and you'd have to get it back to that. Um, when you do this product, there's two ways it could look. You could be N, LN, M plus L. And again, whatever log it is, I'm just using LN. So this in parentheses with the N out in front, you're multiplying, or there's another way to get there from here, but essentially distributing this N N L N M plus N L N P. And if you get either one of these, you're basically trying to come back to here. But again, you it's really just once you get to the worksheet and see some of these problems, I'm gonna try to got some rules on the end to try to try to help y'all out. But you know, you really just gotta kind of see them, you know, almost trial and error. All right, again, give y'all a minute to, to get that. Not a minute, maybe, you know, a few seconds, pause it if you need to, and then we'll move on. All right, so expanding. 
So exponents up here, I move it out in front, two times log base three to four, pretty simple. Condense, numbers out in front, move it back to be my exponent, log base eight of three to the fifth, which again is not completely done because I could do three to the fifth power. Again, you can, if you're asked to expand this, you're not just gonna do four squared to 16. You gotta move it out in front. That's the idea of the, the power property. But when you're condensing, you move the five back up here, but again, it's the same idea. I still have math I can do at this point. Okay. If you're expanding this and you're not evaluating like we are down here, which I'll get to in a second, there's no more steps I could do to expand this. Okay. When we condense, this is how we condense, but I could still do three fifths or three to the fifth power, which is 243. So you would need to actually calculate that. And then evaluate in two times log base three of four. It's two times log of four over log of three. And you can punch that into your calculator with the change of base, get 1.262, multiply it by two. This one, again, this one's not necessarily as bad to punch in your calculator if you were asked to evaluate it for whatever reason. Two parentheses log, parentheses four, close parentheses divided by log, parentheses three. So you could do that and then still get your 2.524. And one thing I will say about actually doing four squared, you know, if you did do four squared, so you got log base three of 16, did change the base with this, log of 16 over log of three, guess what? You would get 2.524. So you still got the same thing. All right, again, I'll give you all a minute to get this and then we'll move on to the examples. Not a minute, maybe, you know, pause it if you need to, but about five more seconds, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, examples, product property. So we got different logarithms, a couple were expanding, a couple were condensing. Maybe in my head. Got the property over here in case you need it. So natural log of 5x. And we're starting with one logarithm or expanding it to two or more. I only got to do two because I got five times X. Again, I have, you know, MN is M times N. Kind of need to make that comparison five times X here that you can do that. I know all my logs are going to be natural logs. It stays the same. It doesn't change. You know, where the M place is, I got five. So natural log of five plus, plus natural log of N, which is going to be X. So I put that natural log of five plus natural log of X. Again, this is as far as I go. I expanded this. I can't evaluate because I can't calculate the natural log of X. I don't know what X is. All right, log base three of two X, Y. Two times X times Y. And again, pause, rewind a little bit, pause if you need to to write that, and then come back to number two. So now I'm splitting this up into three. If you look down number four, I got three. I can split it up into three. Log base three of two plus log base three of X plus log base three of Y. So two X and Y all get their own log base three. And I'll pause that for a second if you need to. All right, three and four, we're going the other way. We're condensing. So we're starting here and combining back into one. The other thing having this five times X, two times X times Y, M times N, you know, helps you out when you get here. If you can't automatically do, you know, the property 12 times four, get 48 in your head, you can write it out. And again, maybe now you can do it in your head or if not, punch in the calculator. 12 times four is 48. So again, if you're asked to condense, this would be your final answer. But again, with a problem like this, usually it's only going to be when you're condensing, Okay. So like I said, when you're when you're expanding, usually you've got variables involved. But when you're condensing, if you get this again, you might be asked to actually evaluate it. And you don't even have to do change of base formula or anything with natural log of 48. You can straight punch that in your calculator. LN parentheses 48 equals on your phone. Again, you would flip it 48 LN 
and it would automatically pop up, which I believe, uh, I don't remember what it was, 3.871. I want to say that's right, 3.871. How many times have I done this? All right, so again, if you're asked to evaluate, that would be it, otherwise, that's your answer here. Let me do I did in class, underline your answers in the sky blue, light blue, whatever you want to call it. All right, four log seven plus log three plus log Z. And you would have to do seven times three times Z, which gives you log of 21 Z. That's a Z, it's not a two, Z. Again, pause if you need to, about to move on. I might get close for a while. All right, quotient property. And got the quotient property up here. Starting very basic, natural log of five divided by X again. Same color, same, color, same log, same number and variable, just you know, dividing it now. Natural log of five minus, minus natural log X. So taking it from the fraction, splitting it and subtracting. Gonna do the same thing here. Log base three, again, M is, M doesn't necessarily mean a single number or variable, it's your numerator. So I'm gonna do log base three of two X minus log base three of Y, my denominator. So, yeah, I don't think I mentioned it yet in this video. Again, the idea when we're expanding is every logarithm we want to have a single term, All right? 5x, 12, 4, 7, 3, z. This has 2x. So I could still expand this further using the product property. Okay, using the product property. Log base three of two times X. So that's gonna expand to log base three of two plus log base three of X. And then I still got the minus log base three of Y afterward. So there is my answer for that. Yeah, answer, answer. Natural log of 12 minus the natural log of four. Going the other way now. So now we're starting with this, we gotta turn it into the fraction. Natural log of 12 divided by four. Again, I can do the math. I did 12 times four is 48. Now I can do 12 divided by four, which is three. Again, if you're just asked to condense, that's fine. In fact, and again, with these guys, I know I was running problem through problem. You know, if you need to go back and pause it, pause it at the end of each problem and get caught up before you move on. Don't, don't feel like I'm trying to rush you. Go back and pause, okay? So natural log of three. Again, I can evaluate this, if so you might be asked to. I can't evaluate anything with the variables, but I can evaluate this. Punch the natural log of three into your calculator and you can get about 1.099. Well, ln of three equals on this one, three ln. Again, you gotta turn sideways to get the ln. 3LN on that one and it'll automatically pop up. Again, pause if you need to catch your breath. Last problem, log of seven minus log of three plus log of Z. So again, we're gonna run into a, a little bit of another twist now, okay? If we look up here, I had a plus minus. Here I have a plus minus, but they're flipped. So when I've got three, four, five logs, how many ever I'm trying to add or subtract together, okay? Doesn't matter how many I'm trying to add, okay? I added three here, I could add five, you know, plus log of nine plus log of P, I would multiply that by nine P, so I would get 189 PZ, okay? How many ever I'm trying to add doesn't matter. As I showed y'all previously, I can't do, let me drag this down. Well, that was left over from class. We're gonna do another discussion on that. Let me erase that, sorry. 
select over from six period. So I can't have it multiple negative signs, all right? Log of seven minus log of three minus log of Z. Because that would eventually create log of seven over three over Z. And again, technically I could try to deal with that when you've got a fraction within a fraction. You multiply the, the bottom two by the reciprocal to cross it out. And then this turns essentially turns into seven over one times Z over three, which would be seven Z over three. But I, we're not trying to deal with all that. That's, that's the point on that. We're not trying to deal with all that. So, you know, for since we're not gonna see those, if we've got three or more like this, you might see, you know, two or three plus signs in a row, but you're only gonna see one negative sign at any point. Looking for that negative sign is gonna be key. Okay, looking for the negative sign is going to be key. Because if we go back and look at the problem we already did, let me drag that away a little bit. All right. If we look at the problem we already did, two and the X are before the subtraction sign. Those are what were in the numerator over here. The Y is after the subtraction sign. That's what was in the denominator over there. That's the key. So I got log of seven, which is before the subtraction sign. Three and Z are after it. So it's going to be log of seven over three times Z, which is log of seven over three Z, which again was what we not what we got. I think I had, I think I had seven Z over three. So see that doesn't work. Anyway. I know this is right. So the other one didn't even work anyway. Was it? Did I erase it? I erased it. Yeah, the other one I would have gotten seven Z over three. So the other one I wouldn't have gotten the right answer anyway. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, pause if you need to. Five, four, three, two, one, moving on. Okay, I'm not gonna get four o'clock, it's 357. All right, power property. So again, this one's a little different. We're either just moving this out in front or moving it back up top. So moving it out in front or moving it back up top. So here, we're gonna move it out in front, X times the natural log of five. Easy piece. Number two, move the four out in front. Four, log base three, yeah, I can remove the parentheses now because the four is no longer on it, two X. But I still run into the same problem. I still got two X right here. So this is kind of what I was even trying to talk about on that slide with the power property about the four being out in front. There's really two things I could do now, okay? I could leave the four out in front and do the product property with that. Put in parentheses log base three of two X, or excuse me, of two plus log base three of X, trying to go too fast. Or you can think about it when I have the four out in front now, it's attached to this log base three. So I can still do the product property, but when I do my logs, it's gonna be four log three, two, four log base three of two plus four log base three of X. Again, these are the same things. If you look at it, if I distribute this four there, and there, I would still get this. So it's still the same thing. All right, four LN12. Now the four is out in front, we move it up top. So we've got the natural log of 12 to the fourth. And I could do math here. I could do 12 to the fourth power, which is 20,736. Again, I've I'm sure I could work that out in my head if I worked that out in my head if I needed to, but I've multiplied that already multiple times. 
And again, if I wanted to evaluate, it would be, what was it, 9.940? I believe that's right. All right, and number four. So again, number four, trying to tie these into here. Now, uh, the number four I, I've got looks like this. If you actually saw it looking like we did below, like we have on the bottom one, the burgundy. So seven log of three minus seven log of Z. I would honestly, instead of trying to deal with these separately, pull out the seven. So where it's like this and then kind of operate going forward. Because inside the parentheses, I can do the quotient property. Kind of like when I split this up and did the, the product property here. So this gave me seven log three over Z because I did the quotient property. Now I can move the seven up here. And again, when I do that, I'm not getting three to the seventh over Z. I'm taking this whole thing. So not doing that. I'm taking this whole thing to the seventh power. So log of three over Z to the seventh power. And that's my answer. Either or on this one is correct. And this is my answer, might be asked to evaluate it. That's my answer for that. Give y'all one more minute again to get that down and I will show you the last slide of notes. Now I'll show you all the, the homework examples. And I can get this in in about 40 minutes. I'd probably be a little over that doing the examples especially since it just turned to four OT. But anyway, all right, last slide. So kind of what we just saw here with, you know, had to do the product property and the exponent, and then here the, the quotient property and then deal with the exponent. Oops, didn't mean to draw that. So I, I kind of try to write these rules, particularly when you're dealing with the worksheet expanding and condensing with multiple properties. So when I say multiple property, multiple properties, you're doing the, you're doing, you're definitely doing the power property and either the product or quotient property, potentially both of those, but definitely the power property and at least one of the other two. So expanding, if your exponent is on the outside, right? Like it was here, if your exponent is on the outside. You do the power property first, move it out in front, and then the product or quotient properties. Okay. If your exponent is on a single number or term, but we did not see any of those examples, but I think there's one on the worksheet that's like this x over y to the sixth. Product or quotient property first. So log of x minus log of y to the sixth, then the power property to move it out in front which would be log of X minus six log Y. Okay. So again, y'all pause. I'm gonna move down to condensing in a second. Pause that to get that down. And I'll slide it down. I will give you five, four, three, two, one in real time. Again, last chance to pause it if you didn't. Moving down. All right, condensing, same number in front. So this, this is gonna look a little different than I did to be honest. So that was like talking about if we did it here. Again, I would pull it out first, but it says what you can do is the power quotient property first and then the power property. Again, I mean, that's kind of what I did. You just had to, again, pull the seven out. You could, you know, if we're looking at it right here, Again, you could, knowing the four log three is still gonna be in front, just going back this way, knowing you're gonna have that and then say, all right, since I got two plus X, I gotta do that and then do the power property to move it back up top. If you only have one log with a number in front or different numbers in front, power property first, then product slash quotient properties. Again, what do I mean by that? Well, if I have 
ln of x minus 8 ln of y. It's only gotten the one out in front, so go ahead and move it first. ln of x minus ln of y to the eighth. Then do the quotient property ln of x over y to the eighth. And then different numbers in front, so three ln, or I'll do three log base seven of x plus five log base seven of y. Again, my base is all that matters, log base seven, log base seven, so I can do that. I'll move the three here, move the five there, give me log base seven of x cubed plus log base seven of y to the fifth and use the product property to give me log base seven of x cubed times y to the fifth. So that would be that. And I did pass 405, it's 406, maybe 410, maybe the 45. All right, so again, pause this and I'll do a countdown after a few seconds. And once I do the countdown, I'm moving on. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, so now let's look at your worksheet and I'm gonna do a few examples on the worksheet. All right, so I'm in six periods, properties of logarithms. Here's the worksheet. I'll have the link for this video once this video is done. And if you click on it, it just pops up in. If you actually click there to download, this is what pops up. So note the numbers that you're going to skip, 11, 14, 18, 25, and 26. So you're skipping those. I'm going to do four other ones for you. Okay. We're going to start with number three. So number three is expanding rule one. I have the exponent on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to move the exponent first. Get five log of six over 11. And again, two ways you can do this. Okay, and I'll take either one. You can leave the five on the outside and then do your, since we're dividing this quotient property, log of six minus log of 11 in parentheses like that, or again, stick the five with this log. So five log six minus five log 11. That's what you gotta do for that one. You know, if you look, six is similar. Uh, Eight similar, even though it's multiplying instead of dividing, you'd move the two out in front and then deal with it, okay? Four, again, just look at what I have on the screen. Four, five, and seven are similar. They only have one number with the exponent on it. So two cubed, two to the fourth, y to the sixth. So when you have the single exponent, you have to do the product or quotient property first. Here would be the product property. So log of three, plus log of two cubed. So split that, log of three, log of two cubed. Then move this out in front and get log of three plus three log two. And same idea with five and seven, except you do the quotient property first. So instead of adding, You'd be subtracting. Again, let me show it with this one. Not trying to do, you know, not trying to go ahead and do that problem for you, but if this had been three over two cubed instead, would be log of three minus log of two cubed, and then you still would have thrown the three exponent out in front. All right, so there's that again. Give y'all a pause to do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Moving on down, I'm gonna do 15 and 17. So for 15, 
Again, a couple ways you can go about it. I've got, well, not a couple ways. Um, no, there's a couple ways, I guess. You can, like I said, I would go ahead and pull the four out, okay? So I know I'm pulling a four out, four out, and do four parentheses log three minus log eight. Again, you could do, you could know you're leaving four out in front of the log because we're doing the log and go it, you know, you know the four is going to be out in front. We're combining the two logs into one. So four log, and then go ahead and do your um, quotient property, which is essentially what we're doing here anyway. Okay. Again, I think it's a little easier to see with the four out in front here. So pull your four out in front, do your quotient property in here. And again, we're combining this into one. So I don't have to do the parentheses anymore. So four log of three over eight, which is kind of what I was talking about doing up here anyway, you'd still get this. I know that might sound a little confusing. I apologize for that. Move the four up here. Again, this isn't going to be three to the fourth over eight. It's this whole thing to the fourth power. So log of three eighths to the fourth power. Again, I, I'm fine with you leaving that. You don't have to do three eighths to the fourth power, which is 81 over, what's 64 times 64? 256, 3840, 4096. So 81 over 4096, and then doing the log of that. Yeah, you don't have to do all that. I'm fine with you leaving it like that. 17, this is where we have the individual number. So, uh, well, yeah, leave it like that. I'll try to avoid anyone that would actually make you do log of 81 over 4,000. 96 or actually calculate the log of 81 over 4096, which I'm not even gonna do that. Um, but again, it's gonna be slightly different here on 17 because we're gonna move this first. We're gonna have the log of seven minus the log of 12 squared. So now we can do our quotient property log of seven over 12 squared. But again, with the individual one, you might just get that as your answer or with the individual one, they might actually want you to square that. So I'll say or seven over 12 squared, which we know is 144. And I'm not gonna actually do the 81 over 4,096, whatever I said it was. All right, so there's some of your worksheet examples. Again, pause this real quick, just in case you need it. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. There we go. All right, didn't get in 35 minutes, didn't get in 45 minutes, got in 48 minutes. So long video. Again, I hope it was helpful. If you got any questions, let me know in your mind. Otherwise,